Hi everyone, my name is Serenity and in this video I wanted to throw in my reactions and theories for the new introduction opening for season 2 of The Owl House. And I've been a longtime fan of The Owl House for, you know, ever since the show came out. After Star vs. The Force of Evil, I'm like, dang, I really, really would love to see another good show from Disney, at least that, you know, would try to do even better. And it was really awesome when this show came out. So I've been watching ever since season one, been really hyped for this new season to come out, even if it's just like one little snippet of what's to come soon on the 12th in June. It's really great. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to just get straight into my overall reactions first, then some theories, and what might be in regards to the future with season two of the show. Three, two, one... Oh, sweet, we get sick character introductions. Or at least they have their own moments to shine in the intro now. Ah, oh, this animation is so smooth. Oh, okay, Coven Leaders, three important characters, Bellos. Oh man, <laughs> I swear Disney's animation has just been getting better and better with their shows. And I, I, I believe this is a lot different from the last season because in the last season, obviously, you didn't have these like this border kind of like scroll background for the title itself. But yeah, so that was the whole introduction, and there will be spoilers ahead for when I go into my theories. I don't know if that's obvious or not, but that's kind of the plan here. So, for one thing that I found interesting, it's like the fact that they included these bones all throughout the end screen, which obviously the entire town is Bonesboro, and that's where the entire Boiling Isles, like the entire Boiling Isles is in the ocean, resting on the Titan itself, the decaying Titan. But it's like, I really like that they pointed this part out. And then going back from all the way through from the beginning, the eye plays a key part with the portal that Luce handed over to Bellos at the end of the season on the final episode before Ida was about to be petrified for good. And the fact that, of course, she blew up the portal with her fire glyphs, but Bellos found some way to try to reconstruct it with even more, you know, add-ons to it that he's going to use eventually for his plan for the Day of Unity, and I just really appreciate that they put that plot point kind of there, even if it's not, like, the most amazing or, like, key part of the introduction. I especially like that they have these character introductions kind of, like, you know, of course showcasing and reminding us what these characters are capable of, or even if it's just, like, a small bit. And this is the one part that I want to get at the most. So obviously you can see Lilith, the spy character from the final episode, and Kikimura are all depicted here in the screen. There are the nine coven leaders, which I really, really want to see some of that action from at least one of these coven leaders because you don't just introduce these characters and never show them to us in, you know, proper animation introductory format and it's kind of like it's really nice with how they're trying to symbolize stuff and as you can see Lilith angry in this one concealed also concealed but one thing I also would want to note is that this staff that the spy character is holding is also non it doesn't have a palisman on it, just like we saw how Emperor Bellus's staff didn't have a palisman on it, and it just had, you know, that little red orb on it, and it also resembled, like, you know, it had some white accents on there too, and it's just really interesting. I really want to see how that kind of magical technology works in that sense, so hopefully with this character we'll get some explanation of that as well. I also didn't notice this in the first time that I just now viewed this, but the Owl House obviously is over here, and Bellis' castle is on the other side. It's symbolizing that they're opposing sides to me, so that's kind of 
cool that they included that part. But then, as you can see in this shot, all the characters that were previously like hiding behind their, like you know, they were hiding their feelings and true intentions or whatnot. And Lilith is, you can see that Lilith doesn't have as extravagant of an outfit from the last time, but she just has like a tattered skirt, simple, doesn't want to be seen probably has regret for what she's done. Maybe we'll get an expose episode of what happened to Lilith because obviously she was the member. She was not just a member of the Emperor's Coven, but she was the leader of the Emperor's Coven, leaving room for an episode where we can see the aftermath directly of what happened when she chose family over the Emperor. So I think that's another important kind of foreshadowing and speculation point for everyone. The spy definitely is going to be a huge integral character to the plot, and I hope over time that maybe with Luce kind of in the picture, Luce has this like charm that she is able to, you know, kind of make friends with, and you know, she's like really good at getting to know people, why they do the things that they do. I mean, she was able to become friends with Amity Blight of all, you know, witches, and she used to be extremely mean but it also was like she understood where amy was coming from her parents are extremely strict and ever since luce has gone to the boiling isles she's just made a major change on everyone's existence in the boiling isles that i really hope that we can get some redemption arc out of this character and whether or not we do that's fine but i'm really excited to see what he's going to play into the whole story Kikimura, obviously the Emperor's assistant, very angry, presumably at some of the actions that the main gang of characters have gotten themselves into or what they're trying to do against the Emperor. Obviously we know her, her loyalty lies to the Emperor himself, so I really am not sure about what kind of powers Kikimura has besides just normal spell circles, because this seems to be her more demonic form I guess you could say and going on from this shot I really find it interesting that it shows Bellos yeah literally grabbing the characters and his castle and it's kind of like symbolizing hey I've got all these characters in the palm of my hand and I can you know have them on my playing field whenever I need them because in chess you kind of have to protect the king and Bellis is trying to get his subjects to, you know, listen to him, so then he gets protected. So I kind of find that symbolism to be interesting. And it's like, how will he try to regain control or lose it over the characters in the next coming season? Obviously we know that Ida, Lilith, Luce, and eventually all the other Hexide school friends might be looped into the whole fray of possibly starting a rebellion against the Emperor, so it's this huge battle of the Emperor trying to get control before the Day of Unity. Somehow I think that with the Day of Unity plot point, the exact characters might be faced with, you know, other conflicts, but yeah. Let me get this really nice animation scene. Obviously it's still the same, but with a lot of touch-ups and course you have Ida's heterochromia in her eyes signifying the curse has been shared with Lilith and her gem still remains dark but I find interesting in the in this opening part where she teleports she uses Albert to you know make a portal so maybe her magic that might start returning over the course of a few episodes later maybe they'll like do a plot point of loose getting her own staff or them making like a partnership agreement with albert custody agreement <laughs> but i really hope that over time ida is able to utilize both glyph magic uh, and her old form of magic with spell circles because you know whether or not she gets her glyph no, not glyph. Spell circle magic back. It's... I mean, Luce is going to be exploring all the different ways to 
you know, utilize glyphs, I'm sure, in the next season, because I think Dana promised that we would see a little bit more glyph action in season two. And I believe one of the episodes that we might see in the future could be a whole episode of discovering different glyphs around the island and, you know, of course, working out some issues. Maybe Ida will... Because I remember uh, hearing another theory from a while ago, and I'm, I'm really starting to think that that might be a viable plot point. I think the, ri the round table said something about, you know, exploring different issues of like, you know, trying to understand glyph magic or maybe pushing it too hard with making progress with glyphs. Because even though Luce has like four main types of glyphs and she's shown to be very resourceful in the way that she utilizes those types of magic, it might not be enough to take down the Emperor. So it's kind of going to be like a training montage, no pun intended, with that huge montage there in the first season in the sports episode. But yeah. So that's all the reactions and theories that I have for now. I'm not a professional at this yet, but I'm really hoping that with this experience and more animation coverage, I can try to bring more content that's varied to fans and also share what I think about my favorite shows, etc., and reactions to things when they come out right away so then people might be interested in watching. Thanks for making it to the end of this video. If you liked it, please consider subscribing, liking the video itself, and letting me know what you think in the comment section down below. What do you think will happen in the Owl House Season 2? Do you think Bells will ultimately fail with this plan? What do you think the characters will be like in Season 2? Any theories of your own? Post them down, and I'll give them a look. Until next time, this is Serenity, signing out.